When my friend Mark has something to say, I suggest you listen. That's all I have to say. Some people leave comments every now and then in an annoyed tone of voice saying, sure, it'd be nice if you left your camera in flash settings. <laughs> They're annoyed. I'm even more annoyed by them asking that question. That's like somebody asking me what microphone I use as if using the same microphone that I'm using is going to give them the same results. You'll never sound like me. You're not using the same recording environment. You're not recording into the same recorder. You're not using the same post-processing. Ah, this is the part where you say, that's it. It's his post-processing. No, you're not placing the microphone in the same place that I'm placing it. Everything, it's how everything comes together that gives you the results. And it's the same thing with cameras and lenses and flashes and all that. I'm constantly changing the settings. Matter of fact, if I took my same settings that I did the photo shoot in the same location with the same lens, the same camera at two in the afternoon, I would get completely different results at eight in the morning or 10 in the morning. They would look different and have to adjust everything. A long lens at 5.6 will give you similar results to a wider lens at 1.4 and you'd have to way adjust your shutter speed to compensate for that. Does your camera do 1 8,000th of a second flash sync? Some cameras don't have a flash sync speed over 1 50th of a second, but I can give you the same picture at 1 50th of a second as I can with 1 5,000th of a second. You just have to change things around. Like if I aim the camera in this direction, I get one thing, but if I aim it just 10 degrees in this direction, it's completely different. I have to change my settings and everything. No, I do a video about flashes and, and I show some sample pictures. People go, well, you sure would have helped if you gave us your flash settings. No, it wouldn't have helped. That's the point. Some people shoot high speed sync. They have it on full power. They can't, and then their flash wears out after like four minutes. Or I'm there shooting for a whole hour and a half. It's the same flash. I'm getting the same look with the picture, but I'm not doing high speed sync. And I'm only shooting the flash at 1 16th or 1 32nd power. So I'm getting a lot more shots from the same flash and getting the same look. So any real photographer would know this. I mean, you know what I'm talking about. And you know how frustrating it is when people say, what's your settings? They immediately want to copy it so they can get the same look. You're not going to get the same look. It doesn't matter. Even if I told you the settings, you're not going to get the same look. You can't. I mean, you're not in that exact location at that exact time of year and that exact time of day. Shooting on, under a certain sunny sky, everything changes constantly. You know, this. I'm shooting a photo sh shoot and the sun goes behind the cloud. Suddenly I have to change all my settings to keep the look kind of the same. You know, you can't tell the difference sometimes when looking at the pictures because I'm constantly adjusting and things. Stop asking what the settings are and start focusing more on what is actually being done. Like, what is the technique here? The technique is not the shutter speed, the f-stop, and the ISO. That's not the technique. Those are just things that are constantly in flux. What you need to study is what lighting is he using? What time of day? Where are the lights? Or in the case of audio, where's the microphone? You know, I can get the same great sound from a cheap microphone as I can from an expensive microphone if you know what you're doing. And that's the thing that a lot of people don't understand. Just what mic do you use? It doesn't matter what mic I'm using. It does to a some degree, but you know, you can get a really good sound from a cheap mic if you control the recording environment, if you place the mic in the right spot and you use the right post-processing, if you use a good recorder, blah, 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 blah. There's all my voice. I could use exact same settings for my audio. I have a completely different sound at three in the afternoon than I do at eight in the morning because my voice changes and I have to constantly be adjusting stuff even though I'm using the same microphone, the same recorder, the same everything. It sounds completely different and I could even be in the same exact spot and, and you would think it was completely a different microphone, a different location, a different person. You know, everything is constantly changing. So stop obsessing about what settings someone is using and thinking that you can copy that. You will never get the same result as someone else by copying them. What you need to do is figure out your own style, your own unique individual look and feel, what makes you happy, what works for you, and then make that work. Yeah, I know you want to study other people and analyze stuff and figure out why it looks the way it does, but a lot of times it's not the shutter speed, the f-stop, and the ISO. Even though you think that's what it is, men think like binary. 
they think very logical. Everything is black and white. Everything is numbers and horsepower and degrees and mathematical equations, but that's not really what gives you the final result. History buffs keep obsessing over specs of fighter planes from the Second World War or something like that. It's not the plane as much as the pilot that makes the difference. So stop obsessing over specs. That really gets me going. You know, people get annoyed when I don't tell them my settings. I get more annoyed when they ask me. You know what, I hope you know what I'm talking about. Nothing, I, I really gets my goat. <laughs> oh boy. Uh, well anyway, I, that was my rant for the day. Okay, I'll see you later, bye.